If you have your Bibles with you tonight and you'd like to follow along or follow along on the screen, I want to begin sharing with you from the book of Isaiah, chapter 53. Amen. Chapter 53 tonight and just a few verses, I believe, as we just enter this time of year where we just begin to be thankful for our salvation oh, yes. and the price that was paid for us. I love Isaiah 53. Chapter 53, because it's uh, the prophet Isaiah is speaking, but in his speaking, we are certainly revealed to Christ. It's very, very powerful scripture tonight. Father God, as we come before you tonight and we open your word, Lord, we just turn our hearts toward you. Lord, it is my prayer that we receive everything that we need in order to understand you, Lord, and Lord, at this time of year, we can just begin to tune everything aside. Just begin to focus on you and your work on the cross, what you have done for us. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Isaiah chapter 53, uh, the, the, there's a subheading in my Bible, and it reads, The Suffering Servant. And certainly as we begin to read this, uh, the entire chapter, it uh, most certainly speaks of Jesus. And the prophet certainly reveals that in the text. In Isaiah chapter 53, in verse number 1, it reads, Who hath believed our report, and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? When it says arm of the Lord, that refers to strength. To whom is the strength of the Lord revealed? And then verse 2 reads, For he grew up before him like a tender shoot and like a root out of parched ground. He has no stately form or majesty that we should look upon him nor appearance that we should be attracted to him. He was despised and forsaken of men, a man of sorrows acquainted with grief, and like one from whom men hide their face, he was despised and we did not esteem him. So in reference to Jesus, this is saying that to see Jesus on the street, he would look like an ordinary Palestinian, Middle Eastern man at that. There was nothing significant about him. There was, there was no significant features that separated him. Uh, his DNA was made up of that of the line of David. Very Middle Eastern. He would have had olive color, colored skin, kind of tan, olive colored skin. He would have looked like a typical Middle Eastern man would have looked. Uh, he did not resemble anything like the... Uh, the portraits that, that have been painted throughout time that show him as a European looking kind of guy. He's very Middle Eastern looking. And if you would see him in a crowd of men, there would be nothing significant about Jesus that would have allowed us to point, yeah, that's definitely Jesus. So there was nothing ordinary on the outside. Definitely not. On the outside. And verse 3 reads, He was despised and forsaken of men, a man of sorrows acquainted with grief, and like one from whom men hide their face, he was despised, and we did not esteem him. I'm reminded of that passage at the beginning of John when it begins to talk about Jesus. For the light come in, and it says, The darkness comprehendeth it not. In other words, they did not understand what they had right in their very presence was Jesus, the Messiah, in the midst of their midst. I mean, in their presence. And he was acquainted with sorrows and acquainted with grief. One evening, I stepped off the elevator, and there was a lady 
she was just crying her eyes out. So I walked over to her and I said, oh my goodness, ma'am, may, may I sit with you? And as I began to sit with her, I just began to share her grief, not really saying anything. And then she began to have this conversation. She began to tell me that she, as she shook her fist toward heaven, and she said, I am just so angry at God because my father is in there suffering with great pain and they're doing absolutely nothing about it and I'm just mad at God. My father served him all of his life. He was an elder in the church, loved Jesus, took people into his home, helped everybody, raised us kids up to serve God, to love him. I served as a secretary in the church for 30 years and then my dad is on the other side of that wall in that room suffering a great pain and they are doing absolutely nothing about it. And so my question to her was, um, so ma'am, are you saying that the nurses aren't really ministering to his needs? And she hung her head and, and she said, yeah, I guess they are. They're doing the best that they can. But he said, I, she said, I just don't understand what God is doing in this. To have such a man be so acquainted with sorrow and pain and undergoing through all of this. And she said, doesn't God know what's going on? Doesn't God know what I'm, what I'm going through? Doesn't God sense what I'm dealing with? My struggle and, and, and my faith at this moment, I, I'm asking myself, God, where are you? And I just sat there and I just listened to her. Because sometimes that's just what you need to do. You just need to sit and listen. And when she was finished, I asked her this question. I said, uh, are you familiar with the story of Lazarus? And she goes, yeah, you're the one from the Bible? Yeah, I know it well. And I said, there's two words in that incredible event that are very powerful that the writer of that gospel made sure that we're in there. Two very powerful words. See, she had felt in that moment that God had abandoned her, that her faith was insignificant, that God wasn't divinely coming down from heaven, taking away the pain. And the words that I said to her were very simple. Jesus wept. And I never will forget what this woman did. She took a breath, she bowed her head, and she just began to weep bitterly. And in the tears she said, I know. but I don't understand. But in that moment where Jesus wept, he was surrounded by people <laughs> who didn't understand. He didn't understand. And what I love about that, those two words, is that it points to the fact that Jesus, even though he was very divine, Jesus knew what he was going to do already. But yet he experienced a very human connection. And then the author just says, Jesus wept. And all those around him who come in contact with him, they kept saying, they kept saying this one sentence is that, if only you had been here, this never would have happened. And when Jesus was confronted with all the tears and all the anguish, Jesus was very human and very real. And that's the unique mystery about the Gospels and about Jesus, is that he was very much a man acquainted with grief and sorrow, but yet very human. He felt pain. He got sunburned. 
You know, he felt those things that we all feel at times. Pain, anguish, sorrow, joy. He experienced all of those things. So then as he was preparing to go to the cross, I always ask myself, what was he thinking in that moment? You know, we're given a glimpse when we're taken to the Garden of the Gethsemane, aren't we? It says that he went before the Lord, his sweat became as great drops of blood. and Lord, that this cup would pass from me. That's a very human statement in the moment, saying, God, I know what I have to do, but is there another way? But yet in asking that question, it's not that he was turning away from the assignment or turning away from the mission. He knew what he had to do. There we go, got the shofar going again. All right. He knew what he had to do. And as if asking that question in his humanness, yet he knew the answer. And he summed it up this way. Not my will, but thy will be done. So Jesus grew up, right, like a tender root, as the prophet tells us. And I love that story. At the age of 12, he gets separated from the caravan. And they go back a couple days' journey, and here they find Jesus. And he's talking to the scholars in the great legal minds of that time, asking them questions. And then when they, his parents find Jesus, they were like, Dude, what is up with you? What, why, you know, what's going on? And Jesus says, I was just about the father's business. You know, as a parent, I would have been like, I'll show you the father's business. <laughs> but yet, in that moment, it was a very divine moment. But yet, it was a very human moment. Much like he was confronted with the situation with Lazarus. And remember the servants came to him and said, man, you need, you need to come here pretty quick. Yet the Bible says Jesus delayed. And in his delaying, didn't, he, didn't Jesus know that people would be devastated by the loss of Lazarus? He was very loved, very well liked man. Mary and Martha, they love their brother. And he was loved by many. And you know what's funny is that, is that after that, I always wondered, like when they took the bandages off of Lazarus, was Lazarus, really Jesus, did you have to do this? I was good where I was at. Because he was a good man. He was in the presence of the Lord. And then the scripture goes on to read past that, is that they began to conspire how they might kill Jesus, and they might kill Lazarus. And as Lazarus, I'd be like, been there, done that. That doesn't bother me. What well, well, that must have been like, I don't know. But I love how the prophet just begins to reveal Jesus. He's basically saying, you know what? He was no, there was nothing significant about his appearance that we would be drawn to him. But, yet, wherever he went, crowds were drawn to him because of the presence of the Lord that was upon him and the healing virtue that was released from a very human person. Jesus got tired. He got tired. And he would separate himself away to pray. And I bet in those times of prayer, there might have been a time or two that he himself may have fell asleep because he was in a human body. And I was wondering, how, how, Jesus, how, how, how did you deal with that knowing where you were going, wrestling with that? It's a very human emotions is that he knew what he had to face 
I don't think he was like, sign me up. I know my assignment. I know my mission. I think he was very human. And we saw some very human moments. Especially as we get toward these last few weeks of his life. What was going on in his mind? I'm on assignment. I've got a purpose. I've got... And there were several times where Jesus was saying, look, told his disciples, I've got to go there, be crucified, and die. And they were like, Jesus, we're not hearing any of it. They were using that very human thing called denial. They didn't want to hear that. Because as far as they understood, they were going to be with Jesus as long as they could. And in trying to convey this, the things that Jesus was wrestling with, the disciples were wrestling, these were very human things that they were dealing with. Yet he understood his assignment and his purpose. There was nothing significant about him outwardly, but yet people were drawn to what the Lord was doing through him. And I love how Jesus said in the Gospels that he never did anything without the Father telling him to do it. He was a good son. So he understood the importance of a father-son relationship. Let's dig a little bit deeper. Let's go to the next verse, if we could. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did not esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. Next verse. But, one of my favorite verses, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was wounded, hallelujah, he was wounded for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Notice it's our transgressions, our iniquities, the chastising for our well-being fell upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. Wow, all those things were done to him, but yet it was done for us. Isn't that powerful? All of us like sheep have gone astray. Each one of us has turned his own way. But the Lord has caused the iniquity of us all to fall. Lord, as we come before you tonight, Lord, we rest in your grace and in your mercy, Lord, as we prepare ourselves to enter this very special time, this very special season of acknowledging you, recognizing you, looking inward, hallelujah, as, as, and yet recognizing that you are very human yet very much God. And Lord, we give you praise tonight for what you endured for us. Is there anyone else who just wants to give him a little bit of praise tonight? Hallelujah. We praise you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. You are worthy. Worthy in this season in our lives hallelujah lord we present ourselves before you as people most needy we thank you lord for what you've done for us what you endured for us being very human having tears run down your cheeks for us god having blood drip down your brow for us, being pierced and bruised for us, being scourged for us. And it is, Lord, by your stripes we are healed. Wounded for our transgressions you were. We give you praise, Lord. You are worthy. 
You are worthy. We thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We give you praise, Father. We give you praise. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We glorify you in this place tonight, God. You are worthy. Lord, let revival begin with us. Lord, as we turn our hearts and minds toward you. Lord, increase our understanding and our desire to serve you, to love you, to submit ourselves to you. Lord, that we could give up our own rights. Lord, hallelujah, that we take your weight, your yoke upon us. For your burdens are easy and your load is light. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hmm. Hmm. Thank you, Lord. Lord, as we go in this season, Lord, we would ask blessing upon our families. We would also ask blessing upon those who are not with us tonight, Lord. Lord, we especially would bring before you Vinny as he goes through his process of, of healing. Lord, the Miller family, Lord, as they have just been able to endure this season, we give you thanks for them. We thank you, Jesus, for the work that you have done. And Lord, I just continue to pray that you just continue to knit us together as a church body. Hallelujah. We give you praise tonight, Lord. Knit our families together, knit our hearts together. Lord, so that we may be focused on your purpose for our lives, our ministry in this church. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Let's stand together tonight. I know this tonight was kind of short, and that is okay sometimes. That's all right. That's okay. I believe the Lord has done what's supposed to be done. And with that, we can rest. Hallelujah. As we close out in prayer tonight... Just bow our heads together. Lord, we just thank you. Lord, bless our church. Lord, I just pray that you bless the families of this church. Help us to come closer together in you, Lord. Lead us and guide us. Help us, Father, to be a help to someone this week, to be a blessing as to lead them unto you. We give you all the glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Be